In the last few videos, we went over a few types of noise functions. In this video, we'll go over how to take these same noise functions to the next level by applying different techniques to them. These three techniques are fractional Brownian motion, domain warping, and central differences method. Fractional Brownian motion, or FBM for short, is the idea of layering the same noise function with different amplitude and frequency on top of each other to get a more realistic looking result. Domain warping is the idea of passing the results of FBM into another FBM. This technique is just something that makes noise look really cool. Central differences method is the idea of calculating noise with small differences on the x and y axis to help determine the normal at each pixel. Once you have the normals, you can easily apply diffuse and specular lighting. If you want to take a closer look at these techniques, then I highly recommend checking out the detailed articles on Inigo Quiles's website. Cool, now that you have a brief overview of the three methods, let's jump into the code and see how to implement each one. What I've got is a simple little Perlin noise shader. So we're going to set the color of the GLSL canvas to be the Perlin noise. The next step is to implement our FBM Perlin noise shader. So if I were to save that, you'll see that nothing actually changed. So let's take a look at what's going on under the hood. What you need to know for fractional Brownian motion is you need two things. One is you need the amplitude and two is you need the number of octaves. The number of octaves is essentially the number of layers. And right now what I'm setting that is to be one. So what we're saying here is that uh, we want to set the FPM noise value. Currently it's already set to zero and we know that this loop is only gonna run once. So we're getting the Perlin noise value and multiplying it by amplitude, which is currently set to one. And then we're multiplying the amplitude by half and we're multiplying the UV coordinates by two. Amplitude is going to decrease the strength of the noise uh, and multiplying UV by two is gonna increase the frequency. But right now, because we're only doing one octave, nothing actually changed. So the Perlin noise looks pretty much the same as what it was before. But what we can do is now add octaves. So let's add one octave. So by setting octaves to two, we're gonna add one octave. And you'll see here that there's a little bit more randomness to the Perlin noise and eventually we can keep adding more and more octaves and you'll see that it starts to look more like real noise and that's essentially what FBM is. So now let's take a look at domain warping. I'm going to uncomment this line of code and if I'm going to save the file you're going to notice that nothing happened to the shader. That's because inside of the domain warping code all we're doing right now is returning the FBM of the Perlin noise. I'm going to uncomment this and here what we're saying is that the domain of this Perlin noise is going to be based on the results of this Perlin noise. And I think the best way to explain what it does is to just save this and you'll see that you get a pretty cool result. And that's essentially what domain warping is. It's warping the domain that gets passed into a noise function. And of course we can do multiple layers of this as well. So I'm going to uncomment this. I'm warping the domain in one layer here and I'm passing in that same domain and I'm warping it again for another layer. And then I'm passing those results into the final Perlin noise shader and you'll see that it looks pretty interesting. Kind of gives a marble texture like feel and this is just one of those techniques that makes your shader look really cool. So for the third and final technique, we're going to want to use the central differences method to calculate the normals. And essentially what we're going to do is in pass into the domain warp function a value of UV coordinates with a small differential on the X and Y coordinates. So here I'm setting the diff to be like 0 0.001 and I'm going to add that diff and subtract that diff on the x-axis and add that diff and subtract that diff on the y-axis. That's going to give us four results. And in order to calculate the actual normal, we just have to perform this normalize function on the VEC3. Uh, you can play around with these numbers to get different results, but essentially this is how you can get the normal for a specific noise function. So right now we're not doing anything with the normal, so let's add some lighting. So here I'm going to create a white, I'm going to create a blue light, and the light choice is going to be at 111 and we're going to get the diffuse strength by multiplying the light source with the normal that we just calculated and set that set the lighting to be the color. So if I save that, 
there you have it. You've got your simple little uh, lighting setup. We can also add another layer of lighting like specular lighting. So um, this is something that I went over in one of my previous videos. Essentially, you can get the specular lighting, again, passing in the normal, and we can set the lighting to be diffuse times 0.5 plus specular times 0.5, and set the color to be the lighting and that and there you have it that is how you can calculate normals and then add lighting to the noise functions and yeah that's gonna be it for this video hopefully now you guys have a better understanding of fbm domain warping and the central differences method for calculating normals just remember that you can apply these three techniques to any types of noise function not just Perlin noise if you've made it this far, then I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.